Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, February 10th. A Monday of Mondays. A Monday of Mondays. <laughs> uh, we get to meet the managing editor of the Lutheran Witness, the new managing editor, welcoming the Reverend Roy Askins. Thanks so much for joining us in studio this morning. Thank you. It's good to be here. Welcome back. Yeah, indeed. I I've been here before. This is true. You have. But in a different capacity. Yes. yes, slightly different capacity. And this time, I think we're primarily all in English. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no foreign not... language from the little, 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 little kiddos this time. But that was really fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, let's let's dig in. Who is the Reverend Roy Askins, the new managing editor of the Lutheran West? You've got you've got minutes. quite the story. So uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I like to start out by saying I'm the husband of one and father of seven. Uh, that's kind of how this story starts. So. Um, I uh, married and, of course, have seven children that are a wonderful delight uh, to me and, and uh, really helpful in my um, uh, understanding my role and vocations in life. Um, as the managing editor of the Luther Witness, I came in from, uh, previously was with OIM, the Office of International Mission, for the last four years. Uh, served in Asia as the managing editor or managing director, no, communications director. I knew I'd get there eventually. It was a word somewhere. It's been so long since you've done that. That's <laughs> right. right. We've been making up words all morning. It's true. So I uh, served uh, in the communications role in, in Asia. Uh, we lived in Hong Kong and Taiwan for the last four years and uh, traveled all over Asia supporting our, our missionaries and our church uh, church partners, partner churches around the Asia region. So um, came in here, started working as the managing editor for Luther Witness on January 1st. So, yeah. yeah. How is your experience as working overseas with OIM, um, being in different cultures, different languages, learning other people's stories uh, not from America, how mm -hmm. is that going to um, influence the work that you're going to do with Lutheran Witness? Sure. Sometimes I, we get so focused on what's going on here in the U.S., and of course it's what's most relevant to us and what's going on around us. Uh, we forget that we actually have things to learn from our partners around the world. Um, one of the things I would often encourage our partner churches is we were there, of course, to support them and help them. But then I also, also told them we have much to learn from them as church bodies that have endured much persecution uh, from the government, from other religious bodies, um, as church bodies that have learned to do a whole lot with very little, uh, who have learned to rely on our Lord and proclaim the gospel, despite the fact they may not have a whole ton of resources with which to do this. Um, uh, we actually have a lot to learn from them. And so bringing some of that global perspective of our partner churches and the trial, uh, trials and struggles that they have endured through and, and what they've done with that will be a helpful tool for us to see and hear here in the Lutheran Witness. But then also to hold up our international work for our readers with the Lutheran Witness so they can see what's going on and how they can participate in this and what the international work of our church looks like. Um, we, of course, know a lot what's going on here in the U.S., but what does it look like to share the gospel in an international context? And uh, spoiler alert, very similar to what it looks like in a national context too, <laughs> right? Uh, we might be saying it in a different language, but we're all sinners, whether we're there or here. And proclaiming the gospel uh, means absolving sins and proclaiming Christ and Him crucified. So, uh, yeah, it's actually been an utter delight uh, to bring these resources and, and this experience to Luther Witness, and I look forward to doing that more. Speaking of learning, <laughs> mm -hmm. what do you appreciate about the legacy of the Lutheran Witness? I mean, this is has a, a long-running history, the Lutheran Witness, and it's it had a predecessor as well, I think, by yes. a different name. But uh, it's actually a bit intimidating, if you know the truth of it. <laughs> So, so the history, uh, all the way back to 1844. So um, actually, the, the Lutheran Witness has been published for almost 140 years. Wow. It makes us one of the longest running uh, print magazines, uh, Christian print magazines in history, in American history, but one of the longest running print magazines ever. It's pretty astounding. Wow. Um, so the, the legacy actually starts even further back in 1844 with uh, uh, Walther, C.F.W. Walther. He starts publishing Der Luther Honor, uh, which actually continued to be published in German until 1971 or 72. Can you believe that? I was totally amazed That's when so I saw cool. that. Yeah, I didn't expect <laughs> that, that, uh, that even after World War II, because you know you get so much of this transition away from German after World War II or before even World War II, and he conti they cont we continued to publish it until 1972. Uh, and it, when you read his first newsletter from from 1844, he talks about his goal and his mission. And one of these 
uh, goals that he has is to help Lutherans, LCMS, LCMS Lutherans, uh, live, believe, live, and die as Lutherans. And I just love that, the idea that you would die as a Lutheran. What does it mean to die in the faith, to die a blessed death, you know, this kind of a, a thing? And he carries this through all of his, his writings. He teaches on the doctrines of the church and defends against false teaching and error. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, but then in 1882, we pick up the Lutheran Witness, which is actually, we don't pick it up, the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Synod starts publishing the Lutheran Witness, and then when they became part of the LCMS, we picked it up in 1911 uh, and became part of an LCMS publication when the ELS became the Evangelical Lutheran, or the district, or the English district, that's what it is, and <laughs> around the 1911, something like that. So uh, we have continued to publish it, uh, and we have one of the uh, actually quite large uh, subscriber base for what's considered a, a denominational magazine. Uh, and it's it's amazing how we've continued, even in spite of the, the downturns and the, the, the struggles that the print magazine uh, industry as a whole is having. <laughs> it's been pretty amazing that we've been able to continue doing what we're doing. Yeah, print. Well, we can talk about print. And <laughs> 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 we're in radio. <laughs> how do you how do you hope on to build on that legacy? That is a long legacy with a lot of really great stuff. Yeah. Humbly first. Yes. Very humbly. <laughs> acknowledging the great history of things that have gone before us. Um, I, and really, I continue, intend to continue doing exactly what Walther wanted the magazine Der Luther Honor uh, to do, to help people understand what they believe, why they believe it, to help them live, believe, die as Lutherans. We actually have a whole issue coming up. I'm so excited about this issue in September on the Ars Moriendi, which is the Latin for the art of dying well. Oh, right? boy. Uh, have you ever thought of what it means to die well, die in the faith? So actually, have, we have a whole issue, whole issue coming up. Uh, on this. So continue to uh, teach people what does it mean to live, uh, believe, die as Lutherans. Uh, also to point out uh, false doctrine. This is something we actually need to be doing, teaching people what, what, does, what are the false teachings you have to be aware of, right? Here's what Lutheran doctrine is, Lutheran teaching. What is false doctrine? Uh, but ultimately, the, the legacy that Walther began and that I hope to build on is pointing people to Jesus Christ and him crucified for their sins. That's the whole reason for all these other things that we're doing. The whole point is to point people to Jesus Christ and him crucified for their sins. We might have great articles, but if they don't teach people to cling more tightly to Jesus Christ, we failed. That's the whole point. So what's unique about the Lutheran Witness? What can it do that perhaps maybe other publications can't do? How is it unique? That's a, that's a great question. And, and as I'm, I've thought about this, what makes Lutheran Witness unique? One of the things that makes us unique is actually the support we have from our partner, uh, from our congregations, LCMS congregations, all over the U.S., uh, most of our subscribers, like ninety-five percent of them, are actually congregations subscribing for their people. Mm -hmm. Right? This is amazing, right? That our congregations value what we do so much that they actually say we want, we're going to pay that every one of our members or as many members as want this can have this magazine because it's so important to us. Um, and so I think that connection to our congregations, that connection to uh, the churches of the LCMS is really what makes us unique, uh, that we can actually get into the homes and teach people because we have this trust, this relationship with the churches of the LCMS. Yeah, that is pretty cool. It's amazing. It is. What do you think is going to be, I'm going to throw this out there, what do you think is going to be the most challenging for you mm -hmm. uh, moving forward? Yeah. So it's always a challenge to get uh, authors, of course. Everybody's busy. <laughs> There's so much going on. So getting busy, authors, no. good authors, is, is a challenge. But, you know, this is actually isn't the biggest challenge. I think the biggest challenge is going to be actually learning who our audience is. As an editor, whenever I read an article, I'm editing this article uh, for you, the readers of The Lutheran Witness, right? Um, how do I make this as clear as possible? How do I make this as useful to the people uh, reading this magazine as possible? And so knowing our audience... This is where I want to reach out to uh, your, the, your listeners here and the readers of the Luther Witness to say, please reach out. If you have questions, uh, let me know who you are. Introduce yourself. Let's have a conversation about what you like about the Luther Witness and why and how we can make this better for you, how we can, how we can teach you more effectively in this tool. I think that's actually going to be the most difficult thing is learning this audience. And so I want people to definitely reach out and say hi and introduce themselves. Well, that's a great point. How do they reach out? Ah, that's like a perfect segue. <laughs> Wasn't it, though? I didn't, I didn't even was, plan that this. That was beautiful. It's not even in the notes. It's not. <laughs> so there's all sorts of different ways that people can get more information about Luther Witness. First off, if you want to subscribe, cph.org slash witness. Please, 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 please uh, go there and subscribe. You can actually get it in print and, and, and uh, digital as well. Uh, so do subscribe there. But if you want to reach out to me, 
lutheran.witness at lcms.org. Once again, lutheran.witness at lcms.org is how you can send me an email. I personally check that email, uh, and, and so if you send something, I will get it. You can also call. Uh, I believe there's a number in the magazine. I don't know it off the top of my head. If you call that number, it will also ring my desk, and you can talk directly with me. Now, this might be a bad idea. We'll find out how that goes. <laughs> but uh, but you can. Uh, I, I encourage you, please, do uh, reach out and, and introduce yourselves. So one of the fun new things that, uh, that Pastor Askin Zare brought to the table is let's dig into the Searching the Scriptures, Search the Scriptures um, the Bible study that's in each episode. So mm-hmm. we, we brought that into uh, the coffee hour with our study with uh, Pastor Ill mm-hmm. last week. And a really easy way to find that episode and other um, Lutheran Witness stories on the Coffee Hour and other programs, kfuo.org slash witness. Mm-hmm. And then you can find all the stories there. What a great idea. Thanks for bringing that to us. Well, thank you for doing it. I was so excited that you guys were, were interested in doing this. Um, you know, one of the things I found... Uh, you know, when you're writing a Bible study and you're not also writing the answers, it's kind of a struggle sometimes. You're a little afraid. Are people going to get what I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. you know, where it gives you a little more flexibility to know, you know what, I can actually answer this because I'm going to go sit down with Andy and, and uh, Sarah and we're going to talk through these and I'm going to answer the questions. It gives them a little more freedom in terms of how they you know, ask the questions. So, The Reverend Roy Askins, Managing Editor of The Lutheran Witness. Thanks so much for joining us in studio. Glad to have you on board. Good to be here. Thank you so much. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.